Welcome back to my channel, all of my MVPs. Today I'm going to be talking about capitalization tips. Before I do that, I want to mention some of the different things that I've been offering. So, so far, if you've looked at my website, I offer manuscript edits for poems and books. I'm facilitating workshops online and lectures online as well as in person. And I am also doing private consultations to work on your professional development as well as your own work. With these consultations, I have been having a lot of different uh, people come through and we've been having these conversations and we've been developing work on the side, so that has been really awesome. Speaking of awesome things, my Patreon page. I have nine patrons and this is the end of the first month. Moving into February, we're going to get another poetry challenge. There's going to be more poetry news and poetry tips that are secretly just for those patrons as well as at the end of the month I'm going to be doing an exclusive tip video which is this one based off of the work I received. So the work I've received this month uh, there's a big conversation I want to have about capitalization. Three quick tips for you and I'm going to get into them right now. First of all, as poets, we have this poetic freedom, right? That we could make rules and we could break them all the time. With doing so, sometimes we forget about the, the little things like punctuation and capitalization and word phrasing. So you can't leave capitalization just on the side while you're breaking things down also because they could make or break your poem and it can pay off in big ways if you know how to pay attention to it. Like capitalization with your titles, for instance. Uh, when you're titling your poems, you can do it just the classic way of the way people title their poems, which every first letter of the word is capitalized, and then the articles or the different conjunctions are lowercase. So that's like your thes, your ats, your ands, those would be lowercase. All the different subjects and everything else would be uppercase. This looks the cleanest and this is the most common, so you won't really trip up a reader if they're looking at your stuff for the first time. Something I saw another patron do this week, which I've started to see more periodically in contemporary poems, is putting that first letter uppercase and then all the other letters in the title being lowercase. This works in some situations, especially if your title is going to enjam into your poem. Other times it just might look like you forgot to capitalize, so you have to make sure you're using your discretion if you're using that method. You can also choose to capitalize none of your words. Have all of your words in your title lowercase. Uh, people that usually do that have the rest of their poem lowercase also and they don't capitalize anything at all. Just make sure that whether you are using the regular grammar rules for capitalization, if you're just capitalizing the first letter and minimizing all those other letters, or you choose to just do lowercase letters for everything, you stay consistent and there's a conversation being had between your titles and your poems. If you want a more specific video about titles with examples, let me know and I can bring that to you as well. Two, it's good to pay attention to your capitalization, especially when you're going from line to line. When you're using a Word document, when you're using a Google document, when you're using pages on Apple, and you decide that I'm going to enter and create another line. I'm going to do a line break. I'm going to enjam. As soon as you do that, these programs are trained and programmed to help us out. So they're going to think it's another paragraph. When that happens, they're going to bloop capitalize the first word on that left side. This works and a lot of poets have done this in the past and some poets are doing this now. I have saw this a lot with older poetry like maybe 50 or 60 years ago that every time someone hits the enter um, left marginated it's always going to be a capitalized letter but now more recently in contemporary works a lot of people are just following that poetic line following that sentence and that in jam to the end of the sentence and using regular grammar rules. So you could have the first line capitalized and it will trail down all the way to line number four because it's still staying on that same sentence. Then there's a period mid-sentence and then it might pick up with a capitalized letter after that. At this point, in my personal experience also, it's even becoming a little distracting to see capitalization always happening on that left side of the margin. I know I've been doing this, but this is actually your right side of the margin, so let me do this. So on the left side of the margin, it's going to be a little more confusing, it's a little more distracting, but that is my personal opinion. What do you think? Do you think, do you really care about having the capitalization always on the, on the left side, or would you rather follow the line? Let me know what you would prefer in the comments below. 
And just to make sure while why I feel like this is just so traditional and I try to stay away from that is because in poetry like everything matters at this point. So everything from a dash to a misplaced period to a comma to no punctuation to a capitalization here to no capitalization there, everything counts. So as the reader or as another poet looking at this work, you're not going to want them to overthink it if it was just a capitalization mistake by accident. Or maybe it was on purpose. Number three is having words capitalized on purpose. Usually these capitalized words are going to be a bit more important. It could be a trope. Let's say if you were trying to personify love, so love is actually an individual. Or if you look at several of your poems and camera lenses keep popping up. So you capitalize camera and lenses. Capitalizing a certain word or phrase can give this word or phrase in the poem a certain kind of power. And you, you just automatically draw attention to it. Now drawing attention to this word could be good because now this word or phrase, the reader is going to start trying to connect it to all the other little tidbits of information within your poem, which can create more of that underbelly or create that more complicated context of what the poem is. I feel like poems are kind of like icebergs, right? You see something on the surface, but once you start looking underneath that water, you start looking underneath the poem, you can see how expanded it actually is. You know, these icebergs are getting a lot smaller in history now, but let's just look at that picture. Let's just look at that picture and not talk about climate change. With drawing so much attention to those capitalizing words, you also have to be very careful with capitalizing some of the words, because if you capitalize words that are starting to get too much attention drawn to it, they're going to start looking at that word more than the rest of the poem, and you may miss a very important part of context or kind of like a sentimental feeling that you that kind of got overshadowed by the fact that there was this capitalized word. So this is the end of the video. For the patrons that are watching, since I have less than 10 of you right now, whoever sent me a poem besides this video, bonus, you're also going to get a personalized message about your poem with some general comments and general edits edits that you can do on your poem. Um, I'm going to be doing this until the group gets a little too big. Once I have too many of you, it's going to be hard to answer you personally. That's why I'm going to start asking you to give me permission to put your poems up because I might actually put a poem up either here or here and I'll workshop some of those different kinks in poems. So for the five of you who haven't sent in poems to me, send it to me by like the end of this week and I'll still be able to help you out. If not, that boat is going to sail and we will be moving on into February. So check out my blog, check out Patreon. Uh, you can hit me up on Instagram and Facebook. It's all gonna be a really good time. Ask me questions, like, comment, and subscribe down below. And as always, I will see you all in the next class.